Hollywood, it's the Jerry Lewis Show, with Jerry's guest Patrice Munsell, Senior Winston, Sam Cooke, the Marquis Chimps, special guest Cassius Clay, Lou Brown and his orchestra, and my name is Del Moore. This portion is brought to you by Brill Cream, to give your hair the natural look, by Citation, the all-new, all-day aftershave, and by Metrical, the simple, effective, practical way to lose weight. And now, here's the star of our show, Jerry Lewis! When the red, red robin pony bob, 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 and along, along, they'll be on more sobbing when he starts sobbing. His old queen song, wake up, wake up, you sleepy head, get up, get up, get out of bed, cheer up, cheer up. The sun is red, live love, laugh and be happy, what did I been do? Now I'm walking through. But still I listen for hours and hours I'm just a kid again, doing what I did again Singing a song when the red, red robin comes Bob, Bob, Bob and along Wake up, wake up, you sleepy head Get up, get up, get up Get out of bed, cheer up, cheer up The sun is red, live love Still I listen for hours and hours I'm just a kid again Doing what I did again Singing a song When the red, red robin Red, red robin When the red, red robin Comes bobbing along Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thanks a lot. And good evening to the Nuremberg trial. This is, I never saw anything like it in my life. I think, you know what it is? I think it's because on a ticket that says that people have to dress up. Did you ever notice why people walk in Hollywood when they're like in the daytime? I'm going to hang out here like I think I'll hang out here. You want to go hang out? Yeah, why don't we hang? Yeah, all right. But then in the evening when they dress up and they have to go somewhere where it says dressing, it's, oh, look how nice it is here. <laughs> I have never had so much fun in my whole life. Oh, look, there's someone crossing the street. That's terrific. <laughs> then everyone boozes to relax. Oh, hi. That's what happens in the theater. Just relax, and, and I think you'll enjoy yourselves. Hmm. I'm going to work this way. Hi, friends. Hey! Oh, sit quiet. I, I do want to assure you, ladies and gentlemen, that there's been really no mystery. There is no mystery connected with the show, the cancellation, and so on. Uh, this is, of course, something I think people are entitled to know. It's just literally what you read in the papers. I mean, there's no mystery about it. What you read in the papers is the truth. It boils down to a simple disagreement. I wanted the show on. They wanted it off. Now, I should emphasize that there is actually no bitterness, really, between uh, ABC and myself. Uh, as for the show ABC is replacing me with, I want to wish it all the luck in the world, opposite the movies I'm selling to NBC. <laughs> all of them. No, seriously, the network did ask me to mention that our last show will not be scheduled on December the 14th, as announced. It will be on December the 21st. And uh, that will be the, my last show, the 21st of December. And after that, if you want to keep watching a network that would fire a father of five three days before Christmas.
We figured it out. Between the band and myself, we have 193 children. <laughs> 193 are mine. They're all bachelors. <laughs> no, you've got one. Yeah, of course there's a few on the way. Among our guests tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we have one very interesting combination. We have Sinuensis, without question, one of the foremost entertainers in the world. Uh, Sinuensis, the great, great ventriloquist whose lips never move, and we have Cassius Clay, whose lips never stop. <laughs> I think it'll be interesting, and I think that you will have some fun, really. We sincerely hope that you will. Uh, I would like to just uh, stroll over to my... Uh, this is uh, the, uh, where I usually... Uh, Phil? Nice to see you, Phil. It's kind of a surprise. W what are you doing here? Jerry, when I do a show with a guy like I did with you last week, I was on with you for over an hour. When it came the end of the evening, you didn't say goodnight. <laughs> I'm a little bit stubborn about these kind of things. Good so, night? That's it. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mean I didn't, I didn't say goodnight to sat here all week? All week long. You're I, kidding. I'm kidding, huh? <laughs> this is my sense of humor. I, uh, I, like, I like people when they're supposed to be friends. You're supposed to be friends. You don't just suddenly say, and good night, ladies and gentlemen, and you give ABC a little rip, and they give you a rip. <laughs> If you've got someone at ABC, they got someone you, go to Madison Square Garden, have a fight. What are you involving the rest of us in? Well, no, no, there's no, there's no real fight. It's just that I well, think... Well, yes, there is. You, you, both of you hate each other. Right? <laughs> no, that's not so. I hate them, but I don't know about... Uh, no. No, not really. Wrong, wrong. I, 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 spoke, <laughs> I spoke to them. They, they're sorry the whole thing started. <laughs> No, they're lovely people, really. And, and uh, I, I think that the whole thing really is predicated on one thing. There is a system. There's a system of rating. And if the numbers are right, everything is fine. If the numbers are, are wrong, then, of course, they, they, they're in business. They have to apply. You're trying to tell me that the, the, all the networks really pay attention to the rating system? Evidently. I, I can't believe that. I can. Do, do, do. Oh, you, you're being sensitive again. Did you ever get a call? Did I ever get a call? From anybody saying, did you like this show? That yeah, show? I got one. From ABC? No, I got a call from one rating service that wanted to know if I was watching my show while I was on. You're serious? You see, the idea of the gag, folks, was this. If I'm doing a show, how could they call me to find out if I was watching it? You get the idea? Oh, all right, fine. It's okay, folks. No, we, ha we have to go to a commercial. Phil, would you excuse us? We, we, we... I don't know what you're so worried about. A guy holds up a sign that says commercial. What's the difference to you? You got two more weeks to go. Do when I feel like it. <laughs> you got to do the commercial. It's a commitment. I... All right, so you do it. Don't ask me. I'm, I, I'm not supposed to be anyway. You're not supposed to what? Be here anyway. Anyway, you're not supposed to. If I was to say I'm not supposed to be here anyway, I'm out of work. <laughs> you're right. You're right. You talk perfect. But listen to me good, and you'll learn better how to say it. Words. <laughs> Gems. Yeah. We go to a commercial, and this, of course, comes to you through the... the what's the commercial? <laughs> All right, go ahead, Jack. Go to... Hello, welcome back, friends. Good heavens, it certainly is fun. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Look at all the people on the shelf. Uh, I would like to introduce to you, ladies and gentlemen, a young man who has certainly made a name for himself in good music. And we know that he will entertain you thoroughly, Mr. Sam Cook, if you will. Sam! Uh, let me tell you about a place somewhere in New York way. All where people are so gay, twisting the night away. And men that have a lot of fun, they're putting trouble on the run. Men find old and young, twisting the night away. They're 
started swishing, swishing, and everybody's feeling great. They're swishing, swishing, swishing the night of me. Let me tell you about him. Here's the man in evening clothes. How he got here, I don't know, but man, you ought to see him go. Swishing the night away. He's dancing with the chicken slacks. Chicks are moving up and back. Oh man, there ain't nothing like twisting the night away. They're twisting, twisting. Everybody's feeling great. They're twisting, they're twisting, twisting the night. Let's twist the world. Everybody's still alright. Would you put your hands together for me? Go ahead. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, make it feel good. Oh yeah. Up there. Put your hands together if you feel alright for me, huh? The old queen, a chick doll up in a diamond ring, twisting that make me feel good. Ha! And man, you ought to see her go. Chick twisting to the rock and roll. All here you find the young and old, twisting the night away. Ha! Twisting, twisting, and everybody's feeling great. They're twisting, twisting, twist. Some fella just brought out a song and said, Come on, baby. Let's do that twist. I like that. Come on, baby. And let's do that twist. Yeah. Let me take you by your hand. And it go like this. All you got to do is go. I love to go round. I like to go round. I love to go round. I got to go round. I gave my love a cherry that had no stone. I gave my love a chicken that had no bone. I gave my love a ring. I gave my love a baby with no cry. How can there be a cherry that has no stone? And how can there be a chicken? How can there be a ring that has no end? Tell me, how can there be a baby with no crying? A cherry when it's blooming. Got no stone, and a chicken when it's hipping ain't got no bone. And I know, I know, I know, a ring that's rolling has no end at all. A baby.
baby, when it's sleeping, there's no crying. A baby, when it's sleeping, there's no. Dirty trick. <laughs> My producer Perry Cross. He had the whole audience in the theater thinking I was going to talk dirty. So I'll bet you a hundred dollars you won't say a word on the air. And I said a part of the way. Uh, wasn't that good, Phil? I thought that uh, it was uh, uh, prearranged. <laughs> Okay, I went to New York this last weekend. I don't, I, I don't really, I don't really think I've ever gone through anything like this in my whole life. I, I would, I best not mention the name of the airline. But uh, I don't know if anyone ever flew this way. This was a jet from Los Angeles to New York that had a musical comedy crew. <laughs> it seems of late everybody has two businesses, their own and show business. Well, this captain opened up with, Hi, gang! Here we are over the Colorado. Look down there, 35,000 feet. What a drop. Wow. <laughs> so thrilled I wasn't because I was still trying to figure out how to put that safety belt on. Because when the light went on, it said, Fasten your safety belt. So I got up, and I grabbed the belt, and I fastened it, pulled it, fixed and sat down, and did I get a cold? Ah! Oh. <laughs> now he says, we're gonna tell you about the interesting things along the way, friend. And this is a tiredness, I might add. There's a pretty good tiredness out, because we had worked all night, and we grabbed a morning flight. And I just finally fell off to sleep. Well, by heavens, look there! Holy mackerel, friend, there it is, Lincoln, Nebraska. See Abe down there? Hi, Abe! <laughs> the stewardess dances by. Hi, Mr. Lewis. How about some breakfast? Hi, Mr. Lewis. Pillow for your head. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. And it's fast now. You know, west to east, it's pretty fast. It's like three hours and 40 minutes. This captain was a show up altogether. Because when we first started to take off, I heard through the intercom, he said, Who's got the key? You got the key, Eddie? Oh, come on. No, I mean it. I mean it. And then, of course, there was like, call the AA club. I think there's a battery down. And we, you know, we finally took off, and uh, I was looking to rest, and he was like Charlie Showoff, you know, the smiling jack of the modern set, a progressive liar. And uh, we made it in 3.40, I guess. Got to the airport, and uh, international, uh, Idlewild in New York. And it took three hours and 40 minutes from Los Angeles to New York, and three hours and 55 minutes from the airport to New York. Because <laughs> they're building the World's Fair. This is fantastic. This World's Fair is to slow up the world. There's no getting anywhere at all in New York City. And I can't mention the airline, because I think that this cat... No, this was Poverty Airlines that I was on. It was a two-seater, yeah, two-seater with straw. I, uh, don't oh, argue with you too I didn't much. mean to wake you, Phil. No, I don't want to argue with too much, but, uh, that's all, uh, uh, a lie. <laughs> I came here by jet. I didn't uh, run into no musical crews, no nothing. And, uh, you, you lied, Jerry. I did that's not lie. I, it's the you truth. You don't go from, from, uh, Los Angeles to Lincoln, Nebraska. That you're stuck in. No, we passed over it. Yeah, about 3,000 miles this side of it. Well, I didn't say where. Like I didn't lie a lot. 
Uh, but that, I, I it's back. down there if you're up there. Oh, it's also, down there. Also, when you land in New York City, you don't take three hours to get to, from Idlewild to New York City. In a rickshaw? Uh, in a rickshaw. <laughs> You're not supposed to do those things, Jerry. <laughs> uh, you got to be a basically honest human being. I am that, honest. That's sure. I'm exaggerating just a little bit. Yeah, because if you want to hear my experiences this week, while you were in New York, you left this New Yorker in California, you know. You had experiences? Ah, <laughs> yeah. I right. went to your restaurant. Yeah, my restaurant. Yeah, you didn't tell me that uh, you never go there. I do go there. Oh. I, I renamed the Chasen. I was there. I was there. I did not see you the whole week. I was there uh, pretty near every night. You got to everything around there. Jerry with the big lips like this here. The whole lot. The whole, the whole Hold it a minute. Yeah, Hold it. it. What's with the big lips? Not you. This is. Why? Right. You want to show it to the people? Show it to the people. Hey, hey, take a look at this here. What is that? Is that big lips? It's what a large that? set of gums. Yeah, it's not lips. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah. What was that insult? I detected a little hostility with that insult. Yeah, only this. You want to come in Thursday? That's the, yeah. And, and that's the first thing. So I went there, so I looked all around. Uh, true, the waiters look like you. <laughs> so I thought maybe in the kitchen. So I went into the kitchen, and there you got your relatives, right? So you, you found a place where you can stick all the relatives, and this is what they're cooking. Cooking relatives? Yeah. And so I had a nice time there. The place is beautiful. Yes. Food's good. Everything's fine. Why don't you go there? Because <laughs> if I'm busy, I can't go there, Phil. I have, I have the show to do. Why did you have to go to New York for? Who needs you in New York? <laughs> well, I was opening another restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I had to go to New York on some business. Oh, okay. I'm preparing for a two-hour television show. From New York? Anywhere. There they go, there they go, they're off, they're recording again. That's it. But the most important thing is, this is going to be on tape. It's not going to be live? For what? Well, I thought that was a great innovation, to have a show live. Evidently, it was not such a great innovation. Well, oh, do, well, Billy. Now what? Uh, ben Franklin, with his half glasses, just told us that we'll be back. It's time for station break, and we'd like all the nice people along the ABC network to kind of identify themselves, friends. See you in a moment. <laughs> Polaroid color pack camera. This is uh, kind of special with me because uh, I got more pictures. Oh, uh, it's really fantastic. 50 seconds, it weighs less than a 35 millimeter camera. It, uh, the viewfinder flaps down like so, closes instantly, and it locks up. And under your arm, you carry it. It's like nice, it's a pussycat, it's gorgeous. You shoot pictures and they're color in 50 seconds, and uh, memories forever. And there's all kinds of copy all over the stage. Polaroid, oh, you'll get a bang out of it, as most families do. And with Christmas coming, <laughs> I need to tell you Christmas is coming. This chill outside, you know, ain't July 4th. This is a magnificent instrument. I think it's an innovation of photography. I enjoy it. It's something that I sell, or it's something that I choose to talk about on live television because I believe in it. I would like to show you. I'm gonna, all right, I'm gonna take the picture. Look at this nervous wreck over here. I gotta get ready, don't I? Look, a man is yelling. Hi there, this is Kathy, our model, for heaven's sake. Hi, Kathy, won't you smile for the Polaroid camera? Oh, for heaven's sake. Now, all you do is rip this out, and then you got that, see? <laughs> what are you laughing? What's so funny? You can take another picture now right off. See, now, this is developing while I'm standing here. Would you put that in my car, please? <laughs> while I'm standing talking to you now, this, uh, this 50 second Polaroid, I don't know how long I did about setting up taking the picture, but this is the amazing part of the whole miracle. In 50 seconds, you will see such a photograph 
And uh, just like that, in pure living color. And I'm sorry that we're not in color so that you really see the magnificence of this. We're in black and white because you, we don't have that other kind, so. <laughs> but uh, this is really a magnificent gift, really. And for Christmas time, I think that you and your family and the children would have an awful lot of fun because you can see it right away and that anticipation, that anxiety, it's answered for you in a matter of 50 seconds. Is it time? Now I will peel off the picture. Well, if Polaroid was smart, they would make me the Jewish James Wong Howe. <laughs> Is that gorgeous? Aha! Yes, sir, JL, you've done it again. Good heavens, aha, the answer to Mona Lisa. Now, I would like to uh, tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that we try to deal in provocative things on our show. And in this particular instance, uh, normally I would interview the guest in question, but I have asked my very dear friend, Mr. Phil Foster, to stand in for me and make the interview so that uh, we can hear somewhat of another side of things from a guy like Phil, who, as I say, is provocative and informed far more so on the subject than I myself. Well, here he is, Phil Foster, interviewing a most important guest. Phil? Listen to me. Listen, you've all been there hearing a, a lot about uh, the TV ratings and, uh, and how they affect uh, lives on, on the air, right? Tonight we have a fellow with us who might be here able to explain how the rating system works. I'd like you to meet Conrad Kuntz. And uh, thank you. And, uh, Mr. Crunch, uh, did you uh, have uh, many questions to uh, ask these people and tell us how to, uh, Mr. Crunch, uh, look at me. <laughs> Do you have any questions that you, you, you'd like to ask me? <laughs> Mr. Crunch, how did you get into your position uh, as head of the, uh, an important TV rating service? Uh, by intelligence. You, you scored very high? No, I flunked. Uh, here, look at me. Look, look, look with acid. Now, what mechanical devices do you, you arrive at your figures? Do you use to arrive at your figures, Mr. Crunch? I suppose you rely heavily on computers? Oh, no, not exactly. We use a dartboard a great deal. <laughs> you, you throw darts at a dartboard to uh, get to your figures? Yes, but the people who throw the darts are college graduates. Oh, I see. Uh, how many homes do you cover in your survey of the nation's viewing habits? Yeah, yeah. Keep Mr. your hands Christ. off me, uh. you. <laughs> Good. I brought it up, folks. Well, that was the beauty. That's the way it that is. That was the beauty, folks. But you must listen. You got to listen to all of us here. All right. Now, repeat the question. Would you mind, Philly baby? Yeah. How many homes do you cover in your survey of the nation's viewing habits? I'm glad you asked that. We cover up to eight different homes. A, a, eight different homes? Uh, yes. Only eight homes? Yes. It's, it's all right, though, because half of them own television sets. <laughs> Are you waving to all eight now? <laughs> <laughs> would, you, would you bring my clothes Mr. down Crunch, and... Uh, you, don't, you don't seem to understand, Mr. Crunch. Uh, where did these eight, eight families... Mr. Crunch. Mr. Crunch. Who is this Mr. idiot? Crunch, the eight homes are here. The families, they all came with us. Mr. Crunch, now where do these eight families live? Uh, mostly within the United States. Oh, I see. Somebody asked the monkey to move his mouth slower. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mr. Crunch, um, 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 uh, uh, would you consider yourself an average uh, rating uh, service uh, executive? Uh, yes, except that I'm better looking than most. <laughs> uh -huh. How did your company fare in a recent Senate investigation of rating systems? Uh, we made the senators look like monkeys. <laughs> I, I see. Now, do you have any questions you'd like to ask me? Tap me and I'll look at you. Tap me and I'll look at you. Tap me. That's it. 
Mr. Crunch. Yeah. I gotta tap you. <laughs> Mr. Crunch, how many you like a wrap in a mouth? <laughs> if you tell me you love me. <laughs> but, but Mr. Crunch, here, 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 here. Look at this thing. So thrilling you're not. <laughs> I love you. Atta boy, Mr. Crunch. Are you yeah. wearing Dardanella? <laughs> no, Mr. Crunch. <laughs> I can't say it. But uh, listen, do you have any questions you'd like to ask me? Uh, yes. Uh, do you want to see uh, my Jerry Lewis imitation? I have to. Watch this. Okay. Now watch this. <laughs> You did very well, considering. <laughs> kind of threw you a couple of times. Well, it's hard to uh, uh, ask questions of an executive. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, the very wonderful little animal, the very beautiful little chimp that work with Phil, is one of the very famous marquee chimps, and we'd like to present them all to you now. Would you welcome them, please? The marquee chimp. You. Are you ready? Off you go. Go on, quick. Go on. Quick, quick, quick. Go on, go on, quick. Hurry up. Go, oh, go. Go, go, go. You should see what you look like from up here. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're, they're just amazing little things. I don't believe it the way they learn. I can only get this trainer to my house. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Uh, um, a flat, is that A? Um, I, I must tell you that there's a very... Uh, very interesting thing. Uh, I think that the children, when I speak of uh, my house or little animals like this, I think that we're all adult children. We all enjoy the same things. I've got, uh, well, I have five, but the three little ones, they're the, uh, I call them uh, Zorro, Cisco, and uh, Batman. And they run around pretty good. And I was thinking, what's the funniest humor in the world? Well, the funniest human in the world are actualities, the things that really have prevailed at one time or another. And we were on summer vacation. We went to San Diego to the Pussycat. That's a boat, friends. <laughs> I'll give you some names of boats down there. You'll think the Pussycat is regal. And uh, we, we go to the Kona Kai where we keep our boat, and I, I brought my wife and my five sons on vacation. And we have uh, a governess, and uh, we, at the time we had a nurse for Anthony because he was suffering from a, a, a tonsil problem. Well, that's like five. My wife and myself is seven, the nurse, the governess, nine, and a friend visited us. And the first day we were there, we ordered room service. 700 oatmeal. <laughs> 11,000 bacon, 72 rolls, and we had to check out that night. I was tapped <laughs> from just this one room service, you know, from this family. And I noticed that uh, Chris, who uh, at the time was five, was very despondent. And it was the first day of the vacation, and, and very seriously, we were 
we, we had a lovely time, but this first day was a rough one because Chris was terribly distressed. And at five years old, I think you have to, well, you have to find out what their problem is and let them know that you're going to stand there beside them no matter what it is. And I said, uh, what's the problem, Chris? And it was his first semester. He went to kindergarten just after he was five years old. And he said, well, I'm mad and uh, I don't gotta like anything and I hope everyone gets worse. <laughs> I said, well, I can understand that, but you're despondent, you're, you're hostile, you're upset. What's the problem? Now tell daddy about it. He said, well, I was in school and uh, this guy, he came over to me and he was seven foot 11, 634 pounds. And he pushed me. I said, Chris, nobody is seven foot 11 and 600 pounds. He said, yeah, daddy, it was a second grader. <laughs> I, I don't know, that struck me so funny to think of what this second grader must have looked like to his mind's eye. I must look like Gulliver or the Jolly Green Giant all together. But kids have a fantastic imagination, and I think as adults we lose it a little bit, and it tends to go into the uh, absurd. With them, they, uh, it, it's dumb, and they know it, you know. Uh, Chris and Scotty were watching the World Series with me. Now Chris is six, and Scotty is eight. And we were watching this last World Series between uh, the Los Angeles Dodger Dodgers and the uh, Chicago Bears. And uh, being a sports fan all my life, we were watching the World Series, the Yankees and the Dodgers, and I'm watching it with the two boys, and it's the opening game, and Chris, being the younger, said, is Babe Ruth playing still? And Scotty, who was eight, who gets distressed with this kind of nonsense, looked at him, no dope. <laughs> He ain't playing no more. He went to heaven. He's playing in heaven. He's playing baseball in heaven. And Chrissy said, Babe Ruth is playing in heaven. And I bet Abraham Lincoln throws out the first ball. introduce to you ladies and gentlemen a very very charming lady a lady with the kind of talent that tends to make you feel somewhat envious that one individual could have this much and yet be so plain and nice I had the pleasure of working with her in New York some months ago and I was eagerly waiting the opportunity to present her to you I know that you will thoroughly enjoy her as I do and always have Miss Patrice Munsell <laughs> of the audience on that. Why? They're yeah. used to this smog. <laughs> did, did it bother you in any way? No, no, I just, uh, no. no. I was just tripping and finding my way down the steps. Let, let me help These you. effects, you know, you're so encumbered with the microphone. What's religion got to do with it? <laughs> what is that? You so what? Encumbered. Yeah, I have that with a salad all the time. <laughs> Come here. Why don't you right. relax? You sing very nice. You sing very nice, too. Yeah, I noticed. Mm -hmm. Why don't you sit down and relax? Uh, who can sit? The stays are killing you, right? <laughs> All right. There they are, Mr. and Mrs. North. <laughs> can, you, can you relax? <laughs> I don't displace my batteries. <laughs> I think this is a dirty lady, Mary <laughs> You know what delights me that, that you have? Uh, well, I must tell the people, I, I know Patrice, and I know her sense of humor, and uh, she is so unlike all of the uh, 
operatic circle. <laughs> oh, we're terribly grand. All of us in the opera. Why don't you take your hat off and relax? <laughs> no. You want it if you no, want No, no, no. What I mean is that I just don't understand that someone can perform as you do and yet have the sense of, sense of humor you have. Uh, Singing high notes like that, you've got to have a sense of humor. <laughs> you miss one, <laughs> it's better to laugh. You know? I, I, lo I love the opera. I really do. I, I love it too. I saw a few of them, like uh, Voidy and... Uh, oh, Voidy's lovely. Voidy? Yes. That's uh, it. And uh, mm. Scheherazade. Oh! We've had him out to dinner. He's lovely. <laughs> Murray Scheherazade. <laughs> no, he's serving. I don't know Murray. Can you, <laughs> can you do improvisation mm. opera? I don't know. Oh, uh, why not? Which camera's on? You see, the thing is, with the star, they always get it straight on. And the guest is always looking three quarters, you know? And my three quarters is just ghastly. So I just, I just want to know which camera's on, and then I'll tell you whether I'll improvise or not. I think this is a crazy lady, very honestly. Could you play, could you play opera for us, please? La Rosa. Get the monkey back. <laughs>
good heavens. Hi, gang. Yes, sir, this is Clyde Wallach reminding you that anything in this... <laughs> Everything and anything is $4.95. Our salesmen are $4.95. Our Lakewood store is $4.95. Uh, <laughs> I would like... I would like